it's Monday, and that so happens to be the day that I like to talk about monsters. I'm Jeff Arbuckle, and this is Monster Mondays, presented to you by Film Seizure. Of course, you can catch new episodes of Film Seizure with myself and Jason Oliver on Wednesdays, but Mondays, well, you know they are for me to talk about monster movies. So now that we've spent like five weeks talking about giant monsters, let's take a couple of weeks to talk about small little creepy crawlies. For the next two weeks, I've chosen a different type of monster. You see, there was a time in the 1970s when people weren't so much interested in the classic or gothic monsters. They were tired of the nuclear age of giant monsters. And I'm not even talking about like the Japanese kaiju style that we just spent a month talking about. I'm talking about like the stuff like giant mutated spiders, ants, and the like. Aliens could still sell, but really after about 20 years, that had also kind of run its course. Now, now see, people started looking at things in the real world, things that we see pretty much every day. It was, if we really deduce this down to its core, man versus nature. After all, the modern day idea of being good to the environment had its start in the early 70s with the very first Earth Day. It wasn't just the obvious stuff that we had done with nuclear energy, smog, leaded gasoline, etc. We were becoming very aware of a few things. First, we were not treading on this planet without leaving a footprint. And second, we were very aware that whatever occupied the numero uno spot on the food chain eventually would be rendered extinct. Still, we felt that we could at least control the timeline in which we'd destroy ourselves. Well, Hollywood and various other independent movie makers decided to play with that idea. There were movies by the dozens in the 70s that featured the same basic idea. What if nature had had enough of our shit? They went crazy with movies about killer dogs, killer cats, killer rats, killer crocodiles and alligators, killer fish, killer birds, killer everything. Hell, there was even a movie called Frogs that didn't even really have killer frogs, but it did have a striking movie poster of a frog with a human hand sticking out of its mouth, so fuck it, let's try selling it. Everything from original ideas to older stories by the great H.G. Wells were mined for that man versus nature genre. So that brings us to the first of two creepy crawly monsters, 1976's Squirm. Basically, this movie is about a super bad thunderstorm that barrels through Georgia, and in the secluded town of Fly Creek, the storm downs some power lines into the wet soil. Somehow, someway, this causes the earthworms in the ground to go utterly apeshit. Throughout the movie, we meet Jerry Sanders, a cute ginger girl who is getting to meet a boy coming down from, I believe it's New York City, named Mick. And I guess he's an antique enthusiast or something, at least that's how they met, uh, somewhere in some sort of a dealer show, but I don't know. I kind of feel like someone should take a listen to this tale of an antiques enthusiast who this girl is getting all purdied up for and say, honey, I don't think he likes girls, if you know what I mean. Anyway, Jerry's mom's a real wreck and her nerves are completely shot from the night before. She's also a little kooky to begin with, and I don't know if there was maybe originally some sort of a subplot about her kookiness, but she's just a very weird kind of widowed lady. Jerry's sister Alma is kind of a weirdo too with a rail thin eight foot long body that really makes her look an awful lot like olive oil. Jerry also has a local suitor named Roger who is, I shit you not, a simpleton worm farmer. He's a little intimidated by Mick coming into town to see Jerry, but let's talk more about old Mick himself. He's riding the bus down to Fly Creek and he has a whole mess of stuff with his, with him like fishing gear, uh, bug spray, tennis racket. You see, Mick is kind of a little bit of a mousy nerd guy. He sticks out like a sore thumb in Fly Creek. Jerry is going to take Mick into town to show him the cutest little antique shop he ever did saw. But first, she has to get some groceries for her tra train-wrecked mama. 
and in the meantime, he goes into a diner and annoyingly gets uh, the waitress's attention by spinning around in the seat like a little turd. There, he asks for what he calls an egg cream. Basically, it is chocolate syrup in seltzer water with a shot of milk. It's essentially Yoohoo, uh, but I ain't never heard of it being called an egg cream. There's literally no egg in it. I don't know why it's got that name, but whatever. A worm gets into his drink, and he pisses off the sheriff by insinuating that this girl that he's always kind of, it's not his girlfriend, but he it, it kind of seems like if he wanted to have a relationship with the waitress at the diner, he could very easily do so. But um, Mick's uh, insistence that he didn't put the the worm in there and that, you know, that the restaurant might be not as clean as the girl says it is really kind of irritates the sheriff. And um, and basically it starts a whole thing where the sheriff and, and Mick kind of have this rivalry throughout the movie. But we're not here to talk about Mick being a gosh darn city slicker with an attitude. We're here for the worm monsters. Okay, so Roger works for his old man at the old worm farm, which is right next door to Jerry's house. And when Jerry borrowed the truck that the neighbors had to go pick up Mick, uh, it was loaded with 100,000 of the angry worms from the thunderstorm. And somehow they got free. So the killer worms are now free, and Roger is generally a problem too. Not only is he intensely dumb, uh, he is also sweet on Jerry, who seems to be bringing this Mick fella around now. And as the worms grow ferociously carnivorous, they start eating first the antiques guy, Mr. Beardsley, and then decides to take over Roger's body. Not only are there 100,000 worms underground, but a bunch of them are hitching a skin suit ride in Roger, who uh, decides to try to kill Mick and take Jerry for himself. It's a really weird thing that happens. I don't know if, if the worms are actually controlling Roger or what, but it, it's it, it's kind of fun, though, I will admit. Essentially, this movie ends up with being a story about a country bumpkin cutie showing a sl- city slicker intellectual type around town. Worms eat people. Sheriff is a jerk ass to the city slicker. Roger becomes a worm man. Egg creams and 100,000 worms trying to eat an entire house. That's what makes this my first thing that I like about this movie. Now, each of these episodes has me find three things that I like about the movie that I'm spotlighting, no matter how good the movie is itself. It's a fun, simple little 70s horror movie that probably played really, really well in the South at drive-ins. Don't get me wrong, it's not art. It's not a classic horror movie or anything like that. But it's not too bad. The real legacy of it is kind of twofold. It used to play constantly on TBS. It was a Georgia movie, and TBS is like the king of Georgia. It would play when Braves games were rain-delayed or completely rained out, and there's a story of uh, Braves announcer Skip Carey always joking about the movie being kind of crappy. Uh, He even did an autographed ball giveaway for those who could make it all the way through the movie and send in a review. And he got a thousand reviews from people willing to take up the challenge. Um, My primary nostalgia for the movie comes from Mystery Science Theater 3000. It was the second to last episode of the original run of that series. Now, my second like is that the characters of Jerry and Mick are actually kind of compelling. Uh, They seem to really like each other in a pretty realistic way. There's something about Jerry, too, that is especially interesting. Yeah, yeah, she's cute and all, but she's actually really likable. She's your typical small-town girl, but that's kind of the point. Uh, She's set up to be um, kind of diametrically opposite to the more intellectual Mick, but she's not exactly a dummy. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but she seems like a great combo of sort of a tomboy and the really fun girl next door. Uh, Mick is kind of a doof, but he's also not helpless or hapless either. Sure, he can't handle worms at the beginning and is a real fish out of water in Fly Creek, Georgia. Uh, But he does use some intelligence to try to figure out who the worms 
skin by looking at dental x-rays, uh, by taking the skull of the skin person and, and checking it against the dental records. Um, this isn't a character that is built to be smart doing dumb horror movie things. He's not unlikable at all. Finally, the makeup effects were done by Rick Baker, and I'm sure that he had zero dollars to spend on effects, but he does some cool work with the effects of the worm-infested Roger by having these biting, voracious worms burrowing into his skin and sticking out of his face and such. And while it seems kind of stupid to have these worms all amped up by a down power line, worms are a decent creepy crawly to menace our characters. You've got worms coming out of shower heads, worms sticking out of faces, worms uh, completely filling the inside of a guy's torso, worms coming out of the walls, worm locking people in jail cells, worms collapsing trees, worms busting through the door, worms all over the place. Uh, and it probably did help some guys make their girlfriend scooch over a little closer at the drive-in, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm sure that it was a fun date night. Uh, watching squirm and at the drive-in back in 1976 now as i said is this that great of a movie Eh, i mean to each their own but i enjoy it i think it's a fun little movie that has likable and sort of realistic lead characters it's not a barn burner on rotten tomatoes but leonard malton gave it a three-star review so i mean i guess that's something So that wraps up this week's Monster Mondays. Until next week, I'll see you later. And don't forget to check out new episodes of Film Seizure every Wednesday and a new installment of Monster Mondays each Monday on FilmSeizure.com. And you can also check out my new post at my website, bmovieinema.com, each and every Friday. (laughs) 